as it begins to get brighter out here, I can tell that the <coughs> sun is coming, so <laughs> we're moving along quick. No, I'm kidding. Actually, I enjoy the sun because we have the handy umbrella here that we put up. And when the clouds get burned off, then it's bright and we have to adjust contrast and try to figure things out. What you see is what you get. Praise the Lord. You know, isn't that kind of like what we do with God is that if you're personally intimate with God, you realize that and recognize that God can see you 24-7 and that because he sees you when you're in the bathroom and he sees you when you're in the bedroom and he sees you when you're in church and he sees you when you're going to bed or when you're waking up and he sees you all through the day when you sin and when you don't sin, that there's no time he doesn't see you. You begin to recognize that the reality of just kind of like admitting to yourself that you don't have to put on airs of holiness and put on some special robe and put on a kippah or put on a hat or tie a little binding around your forehead and, you know, say a rosary and do a cross, you know, and daven, you know, and left and right and up and down and going over and doing this and doing that and stepping to the left and stepping to the right and stepping forward and stepping back and jumping up and down and getting excited and saying rejoice and praying praise the Lord and saying our Father and whatever. After a while, <laughs> you kind of get the idea that if he's God, he already knows. If he's God, he already has you in the palm of his hand. If he's God, I'm not so sure that he needs all these things. While they are good for us, I'm not sure they were ever developed for him. The reality is, is that when you approach God full of love, Love covers a multitude of sins. If you are born again, then when you come to God in His Son, by that mercy, by that grace, by that love with which Jesus loved you, and the Father loved the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son, then you're covered completely of your sins so that you could obtain mercy from Him and grace. So that way you can always be aware that God sees it all. But he chooses to see you as perfected at the end of your life as opposed to imperfected at the beginning. So the joy of when you approach your father is to know that, first of all, he's your father. Second of all, he loves you. Go with the flow. Brethren, for this reason, in spite of all our stress and crushing difficulties, we have been filled with comfort and cheer about you because of your faith and leaning of your whole personality on God in complete trust and confidence. 1 Thessalonians 3, 7. Go with the flow. Stop being anxious about things that may never happen. If you really trust God, you don't need a backup plan. Faith means that you have peace even when you don't have all the answers. Life will always be stressful if you constantly try to rearrange it. For example, getting upset in a traffic jam doesn't get you there any sooner. <laughs> but planning for obstacles will inspire you to leave a little bit earlier for your appointments and keep you from hurrying. Grow in wisdom and place high priority on keeping your peace in spite of any jams you may get into today. The reality of your relationship with God is more important than the circumstances of your life that you think have to be done. You see, we always stack up all these things that we got to do, you know, and they're kind of like, like a sandwich this big. Now, I can look at this sandwich, you know, and I can say, that's a pretty impressive sandwich. Yummy. But if I went to eat it, I'd be going, you know, I have a big mouth, but I don't think I can handle that. And you know, that's kind of what God tries to tell you. You can't handle it, no matter how big you make it. So he tends to begin to compress it into a size that you can handle. Because if you can't handle it, then he says, hey, you know what? I didn't want you to eat it in the first place. I just wanted you to see that it was so big, you couldn't handle it. And then guess what? He moves it out of the way and says, here, this is what I wanted for you. <laughs> Bite size. So sometimes, you know, getting 
what we want may not be the best thing. Getting to do what we want may not be the freedom we think it is. Getting to explore what we want to go check out may not be the wisest thing to do. But one thing I can tell you is if you do what God says to do, choosing which way He wants to direct you today, and I don't mean about sitting down and coming up with the Ten Commandments and don't lie, because you will. You're going to lie, of course. Everybody lies every day. I mean, come on now. You know, have I gained any weight, honey? You know, <laughs> am I lying on my taxes? Uh, let's see. Am I a Republican or a Democrat? <laughs> see, people lie. Do you want to talk about politics? Do you want to talk about religion? You know, people lie all the time. The point being is that don't make your relationship a religion where you have to come up with rules and regulations that you're always going to keep trying to dodge which one you're going to break because you're going to break them. Rather, develop a relationship that you know because these things are going to happen, you're prepared for them. Know where you're going to go when you do what you know you're going to do. When you need forgiveness, you know where to go. That's what it means to know what you're going to do when something happens. That's wisdom. You just turn to God. That's simple. Each and every time. And when you do, on a dependency, very dependent, like a worse than an addict ever dreamed to be, because you're possessed with God, then when you turn to Him in every circumstance, you'll be considered a godly person. Because God is with you.